Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you virtually. Um, we're your facilitators, Ashley and Isabel. Um, Caroline couldn't be here for the recording today, but she sends her love um, and wants to let you know how much she enjoyed um, our semester together and being able to create with all of you. And so I'm Isabel, um, and so I'm the one who lives in Spain. And I was so happy to get to participate with you all this semester. Um, of course, it's better to be in person. And of course, I wish that we could have connected and really gotten to see each, to see each other. I know you're seeing our faces for the first time right now. I wish that we could see all of your faces um, and collaborate in that space. But the circumstances being what they are, I feel so lucky that I got to participate in this workshop this semester and get to know you all just through your creative voices. Each one of you had such a different voice. Um, we're gonna talk about this more. And every week when we got the responses in, it was so exciting. Um, I am a creative writer, but during the pandemic, I haven't really been inspired. I haven't been writing as much. And this workshop really got me to get back into my flow of writing poetry. And um, so thank you all for that. So I'm really happy that we get to have this celebration video and I hope you guys enjoy it and feel some type of closure and connection from it. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm Ashley. I um, live in Massachusetts now, hopefully moving back to Michigan soon. Um, but yeah, I also really enjoyed this workshop. I'm so happy that PCAP was able to continue its programming via um, the regular mail during the pandemic. It's definitely not ideal. I would very much prefer to be gathering with all of us um, every week in the same room. We can see each other, bounce ideas off each other. Um, that's of course ideal, but I'm so proud of the way that all of us as a group were able to make this work. Um, we just really appreciate all of your participation and vulnerability with us, um, whether you were able to submit one packet or all 13. Um, we were just really happy to hear from you. We know that there's a lot going on. Um, many of us have gotten COVID ourselves or had loved ones. Um, we've been dealing with all of the, um, the political unrest that's been going on in our country. And so however much you were able to give us, um, we're so grateful for it. And we're really excited to kind of celebrate um, everything we did this semester. Exactly. And, you know, on that, some participants, we got a couple more packets from than others. And so um, as we're going through, we wanted to highlight the best work of everyone that we got packets from and some people who submitted more. We might read one extra piece of theirs just to give another variety of their writing um, because we think this is really special that we get to send this video in and we know that you all love hearing each other's writing. So we wanted to make sure that we can share as much as possible so everyone can, you know, hear even more of the other voices that were in the workshop. Hopefully we'll be able to simulate some sort of sense of what it's like to really be in the workshop all at once and kind of share back and forth. So we introduced ourselves for your facilitators, plus Caroline. So we wanted to kind of start off just with a semester recap, like what did we do? Um, why did we do it? And how did we do it? We did 13 packets via the regular mail. That is amazing. PCAP has never done that before. Um, we are really excited to come to Brooks. We've never been able to do that before as an organization because um, of the distance from Ann Arbor. So it was a really cool opportunity in that way. Um, we're very happy that we were able um, to bring this programming to Brooks and to create and exist and write with you all. Um, we read An American Marriage together, a whole novel, and we reflected on it really meaningfully throughout the course of all those weeks. Which was really special too, because in our regular PCAP workshops, um, we're limited on what we're allowed to bring in, and we've never been able to bring a full book before. Um, so just kind of looking at the silver linings of the correspondence workshop, it was really special to us to be able to have this kind of book club collaborative um, speaking about a, a full work throughout the semester. 
and everyone had different opinions. Some of you loved it, felt so connected to it. Some of you were like, this is so unrealistic. All these characters are just like, <laughs> what are they doing? And it, but it was great to hear all of the different opinions throughout. Mm -hmm. I definitely think a shared text helped us to connect more and to learn more about each other as well. So with that being said, um, we're gonna kind of jump into like a super elongated um, highlight section of like the whole semester where we um, are gonna go through the participants one by one, um, celebrate their the things that make their writing special and unique um, and also to give you a taste of that writing by doing a reading of a piece from um, each writer. So first up, we have Theodore. Awesome. So we got one packet from Theodore and in that one packet, we got such a good taste of, of his writing. It was very nostalgic, very memories based. Um, and all the descriptions that he sent us were really vivid and filled us with a sense of familiarity and emotion. Familiarity, like we felt like we knew who Theodore was just from reading these pieces. Um, so we really hope that Theodore speaking directly to you. I hope that you are all able to see this video. Um, we really hope that you continue turning your recollections into art and that you continue to share them with PCAP. Um, we're gonna share more about that at the end of how all of you can continue collaborating with PCAP from here on out. Um, so Theodore's piece that we chose here. Um, and we had included this in an early packet, but we really loved this and wanted to share it again. So for the name prompt of what your name means, this was Theodore's. Hi, my name is Theodore Walker Lowe. I usually go by Theo. Some people call me Ted or Teddy. My mom named me Theodore and my dad gave me the name Walker. My parents never married, so sometimes as a child, I lived with my mom, and others, I stayed with my dad and his family. They never called me Theodore, only Walker. When I was in and out of youth homes as a teen or in other placements, I was mostly called Ted or Teddy. When I came to prison, everyone called me Low, and that turned into Lowdown. Not that I was, but I accepted it because it sounded hard. I guess in here, it's easy to be someone you're not. So thank you, Theodore, for sharing with us. All right, next up, we have um, Jason, who was uh, super prolific throughout the semester and submitted almost every packet. Um, so we got to know his writing really well. And we noticed um, that he is really skillful at creating imagery in his writing that engages all five senses, um, really vivid details. And we really appreciated that about his writing. Um, we also appreciated outside of his creative writing just how thoughtfully he reflected on um, an American marriage um, in ways that made us add to or challenge our own understandings of the story um, and what was going on there. So thank you, Jason. Um, you told us at the beginning of the workshop that you see yourself as more of an analytical mind um, and you were hoping to explore um, your creative side. You really have um, some beautiful to say and we hope you continue to challenge yourself um, to connect with that side. So um, I chose this piece to share um, from Jason. I actually chose two pieces to share. This one was short. Um, the second one is not on the slideshow but I will read it. Um, but this one is a poem that you submitted towards the end and it says, as my time draws to a close, will my friends still want me near? Will the stench of this place cling to me like an unwanted embrace? What will the future be like? Will I be able to do what I like? Can I recover from the separation? Will I return to a standing ovation? So that's one piece um, that I really enjoyed. Thank you for sharing that with us. The second one I have here, it's another poem, definitely a very um, skilled poet. It says, you left glory behind you left your crown and picked up a cross. You chose sinful man over the glory of heaven. You didn't want to leave us to our own devices. You saw beyond what we could see and picked the harder road. You gave grace and mercy when we deserved none. You gave freely that which we couldn't earn. You freed us from our sins. You gave it all up so we could have it all. So, Thank you for that, Jason. 
Um, and thank you for sharing everything that you shared with us over this semester. Um, we really hope that you continue writing and collaborating with others. So the next person is Michael. Um, and Michael is another person we just got one packet from, but we were able to get a great sense of his specific creative voice. Um, Michael's writing had a lot of philosophy in it, lots of vivid details and emotion. And his short story about the captain of a cargo ship, Christina, which we shared in the, the final packet, um, really brought us into a world that was so different from our own with very specific de details about ship life. We don't know if Michael has a history of being on a ship, but regardless, he was so, so vivid in his description of what it was like living on the cargo ship, what it was like for Christina being the captain. And I've never been on a ship. I don't know anything about it, but I felt like I was transported into that world just reading it. Um, and you'll see in the next slide, but we hope, Michael, that someday you get to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. We believe that you definitely could um, and that you keep continuing to collaborate with PCAP. Um, we'd love to see more of your writing in the future. So Michael had shared this with us. If I could travel anywhere in the, if, sorry, <laughs> if I could travel anywhere in the world, I would climb Mount Kilimanjaro. It is the tallest mountain on the African continent. And because of its forgiving slope, it is the easiest of the seven tallest mountains in the world to climb. As much of it can be summited by hiking. Not all of us can climb the absolute tallest mountains in the world, but we should climb the ones that we can. So thank you so much for that, Michael. It's beautiful. I love the metaphor behind that. Um, next up, we have Navea, who was also very prolific. She shared um, a lot of really beautiful writing with us that was very um, purpose-driven and intentional. Every choice she makes is for a reason. Um, she never loses sight of her personal values and of conveying them um, through her writing. Her writing often conveys political undertones um, and she's really clear about that. She's very clear eyed about that and it has a sense um, of urgency when she writes. So thank you for that, Nevea. Um, because you are so prolific and write so much and have um, so many things to say and express, we really encourage you um, to submit to the PCAP anthology, which is published every year. Um, it takes submissions from incarcerated um, writers all over the state and um, it's published free of charge to you. Um, you should definitely consider submitting as should all of you. So um, because there was so much to choose from, I chose two of Nevea's pieces to share um, today. The first one is on the screen here. Um, it's a beautiful poem that I'm going to read out loud. Nevea wrote, I wish I could go back in time and have a talk with me. I would give myself understanding that would help me to know what it is to be free. I would show myself that freedom is more than going from place to place. It is more than running from reality. From denying the truth is all just a waste. I tell myself that true strength is from within. Leading by following will leave me alone in the end. I tell myself to see within, not what's in the mirror on the wall. Have the strength to be just me, for others will not take the fall. I'd warn myself not to fear making a mistake, but to learn and understand from each step I take. There's nothing wrong with being wrong if we find understanding to make it right. Seek the truth in all things and receive understanding from the true light. Be yourself, full of love and life. Hold to what's in your heart as you walk through this world of strife. Give, 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 for you have so much to give. Follow the truth always and forever, for you only have but one life to live. Thank you for that, Nevea. I have another piece in front of me from Nevea. It's more of um, a narrative style. This was Nevea's response um, to our prompt about voting. She writes, I have never voted. I do not believe in the government or the system that the government deceives the world with. I believe that this country should do away with the government, starting with the politicians and make things the right way. The constitution was written 300 plus years ago and we have never tried to rewrite it. 
based on the things that mankind has learned over these years? What happened to making changes to things to make them better? What happened to learning from our mistakes? The government does none of this because it would take all their ways of doing nothing but using the game of politics and the people of this country for their own gain. I wanted Trump to lose, not because he went to Washington and did what every president has done before him, but because he's an idiot. I'm not saying that to be insulting. He is an idiot. He's an embarrassment. And what so many in this country missed is that Trump has been telling the truth about a lot of things. He just did it in such an arrogant manner that he was embarrassing. But he's right. He, just as all of the politicians, thinks he's above the law. He thinks he can do whatever he wants. He believes that the people of this country are to serve him. As president, he feels that the other politicians should do as he says, because he is at the top of the order. The order that is in his corrupted mind. Trump is a criminal and he knows it. But because he believes that he is better than others, because he is above the law, because he is on a level that puts him in a reality that lets him believe all this, the criminal things he does do not matter. He is president, he is a politician. The only difference there will be with Biden is that Biden will quiet things down. Nothing will change, nothing will be fixed. And in four years from now, he will be asking for four more years to fix the things that he said he would fix the first time. It is a con, almost as good as religion is. No, I would not have voted if I was able to do so. So thank you um, for that like very poignant political message, Nevaeh. Um, we really appreciate that. And we can't wait um, to hear more from you. So next we have David and David was another um, participant that we got lots of packets back from. Um, and so with David as well, we'll be sharing two pieces. Um, David's writing was very raw, very honest and very well articulated. Um, in one packet, he said that he his aim in writing is to write honestly about humanity. And we definitely feel that he achieves that goal in all of his pieces his characters, um, as you'll see in one that we're going to read, they're very human. They show every side of humans. Um, so congratulations, because <laughs> you definitely achieved what you were looking for. Um, it was a joy to read the mixture of styles that David explored. We received poetry, short stories, and very great dialogue between characters specifically. Um, in David's short stories, there often was a lot of dialogue between people that, <clears throat> like each word that he chose for the dialogue had a point to give more information about the characters. Um, David has a clear gift for creating characters and for placing his readers deep into moments from serenity swimming in the pool, which we had included in the final packet um, to letters between a brother and a sister. We felt we were right there with the characters will be read. Um, David definitely keep writing and bringing these characters into the world. They are needed um, and submit to PCAP and continue engaging with the creative arts community. Um, another thing about David is that after the workshop ended, so actually after we submitted the final packet, we received um, a letter from David or like a, a final packet, um, which was 25 pages long and he included um, a lot of responses that he had originally done from prompts from Shakespeare behind bars. Um, and those were incredible. They were so intimate, clearly crafted with much skill and care. And we felt very honored that he chose to share those with us. Um, so I'm gonna read this short piece right here from David and then a longer piece, quite longer, but it didn't feel right to cut it at any point. So I'm gonna read the whole thing after as well. Um, so this is just a little thing from David. Lingering on words written by others, on novels and poems and essays, on philosophies, these things expand me into a larger mindset. I can see from perspectives impossible for me to understand otherwise. Things I would never know or come to believe on my own are revealed as another simple truth. I find myself in other people's words and finding myself there, I wish deeply to show the best of others in my writing. My ambition is to reflect humanity to, its, to itself and show its beauty and value. I know life is not always pretty, and I wish more care was taken in reflecting that, 
because too often I believe the darker truths of humanity are made to seem compelling simply for their shock value and not for the aspects of redemption hidden in the darkness. And like I said before, you can feel the sentiment in all of David's writing. Um, so we had shared in the final packet a, a little piece about serenity. This is another story that is also about serenity, but it's starting from a different point. Um, so I'm gonna, it's not written down on the presentation, but I'm just gonna read it here. So here we go. The time and relative dimension in space is 11, 11 p.m. on October the 14th in the year 2020 at the home of a little girl named Serenity. She is hard asleep after a long day of swimming in the pool at her grandmother's house. Her mother has fallen asleep watching a movie in the living room and in the yard, a strange man is cursing quietly as he tinkles with what appears to be a large telephone booth, but different somehow. Something in the booth crashes and Serenity is awakened to the high pitched girly scream of the strange man in her yard. Looking out her window at him, she wonders if she should wake up her mother. He doesn't seem dangerous, just silly and clumsy. She wonders how he got the booth thing into her yard. She opens her window and whispers slash shouts at him, who are you? What are you doing? Can you be quieter, please? He stares at her and replies, I'm a doctor fixing a disaster. And yes, you're welcome. He straightens his bow tie and fiddles with something. Do you need any help, says Serenity. Yes, please, says the doctor, and he smiles up at her. If you could tell me a few things about where we are, that would be a great help. Do you need me to come down there, she asks. Well, if that's all right with you, he says. Serenity quickly dresses and quietly goes through the house and out into the yard. She stands a little way away from the stranger and asks, what do you need to know? Well, first, your name, young lady. Serenity, but my mom calls me Ren and my dad calls me Sunshine. What should I call you? You can call me young lady, I like that. All right, young lady. Now, where are your mother and father? Well, mom's sleeping and dad's in prison. Oh, is he a bad man? No. He just did a bad thing, but he's really nice and he misses my, and he makes my mom really happy and he makes me really happy. And I can't wait for him to come home and finally meet him and be a family. She nearly shouted. The doctor winced and holds up his hands. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my mistake. I apologize, young lady. Did you say you've never met your father? Yeah, Serenity mumbles while looking at her feet. Hmm, would you like to? What if I told you I could take you to meet him as a little boy? If you step into this box here, I could take you to him sometime in his childhood, on a playground perhaps, and you could play with your father as a boy. But you have to be back in your bed before the sun comes up. What would you say to that? It's not a trick. You can really do that, Serenity replies, looking at him with desperate hope. He tries to smile comfortingly, but sort of grimaces instead and makes him look like an awkward kid to Serenity as he says, no trick, follow me, young lady. Inside the booth thing are levers and gears and antenna and big metal mechanical bits with sparks coming off them. Just give me a moment to calibrate a few things, thingamajigs and doodads so we can locate your dad. As he works on this and that, Serenity starts to be nervous. If she meets her dad as a little boy, what if he doesn't like her? What if she doesn't like him? How will she know who he is? She has only ever seen pictures of him growing up and maybe he won't be the only David around wherever he is. Here we go, everything's ready. Are you ready, young lady? I don't know, maybe it's not a good idea after all, she says with a small quiet voice that threatens its tears to come. Well, says the doctor, it's a little late for all that, young lady. Look out the door there. Surprised by the laughter outside the booth, Serenity does what he says and looks outside. She sees such sunshine and children playing on a playground. She sees swings and seesaws and jungle gyms. She sees tires buried in the playground and hears birds and wind in the, her, hears birds and wind in the leaves of trees. She takes a deep breath and runs out to join the other kids. They're playing tag. A little girl is it and she tags Serenity and darts away. Serenity scrambles for a target. She races around the swings and seesaw and jungle gym. She tags a boy as he tries to climb on top of a tire. The game goes on with the children running mad across the playground. They get slower as they grow tired and finally the boy who is it stops and lays in the wood chip covered ground and rests. Serenity then remembers why she's in this place and starts to look closely at the boys and tries to think of how to find out which one is her father. She hears a few girls say, ew, all together and walks over to them. They stand around a boy who had been a part, from, who had been a part of the game, but she can't remember anyone being able to tag him or if anyone had even tried. 
He wasn't out of breath like everyone else and he was playing in the dirt. He was digging through the wood chips into the ground and pulling out earthworms. He was talking to the girls only. He sort of ignored all the other boys. He was making them laugh and talking about how fast they had been and how stupid he had been while they were all playing. The other boys tried to take the attention of the group from him, but the boy with the worms was saying the most interesting things. He looked up at Serenity and dangled a big worm. Dare me to eat it, he said with a smile. As he looks over at her face, her smile got bigger and Serenity smirked big back. Yeah, do it, she said, giggling. Without looking away, he put one end of the worm in his mouth and slurped it like a noodle and made huge, funny chewing noises. Ew, all the girls said, and this time Serenity joined them, laughing. The boy put out his hand and said, I'm David. Serenity thinks it is a very grown-up thing to do, shaking hands, but she does and says, I'm Serenity, your sunshine. David looks at her funny and says, how do you know what my mom calls me? Just then the school bell rings and everyone separates as adults come out onto the playground collecting the different groups of grade schoolers. Serenity loses track of the kids she's been playing with. She loses track of her father, the funny boy who eats worms to make little girls laugh. She walks back to the strange man in the booth without saying anything. He doesn't disturb her quiet. They step into the booth and a few moments later they step out and it's dark and quiet in her yard. Will he be like that when I meet him grown up? She asks while biting her lip. Will he be fun and pay attention to me and play and stuff? I think he might be just like that young lady, the doctor smiled and said. Serenity smiled and hugged him. Thank you, they both said and laughed. Serenity says goodbye and goes back up to bed. She waves to the strange man as he steps back into the booth and it disappears, leaving her standing at her window, waving into the empty night. In bed, she falls asleep slowly, thinking about sunshine and how it makes the flowers grow. So that is just one example of the beautiful writing of David. And thank you so much for sharing all of that with us and the, the stories of serenity. That's beautiful. Thank you for that, David. Okay. Um, next we have Jeff, who was very um, eager to learn and that desire to learn um, we found really inspiring. Um, he writes short stories that contain characters that um, are very lifelike. They're rounded and complete and complex. Um, and we know that Jeff also um, likes to paint um, in addition to being a creative writer. Um, and so we hope that you continue to use writing and painting um, to express yourself and to um, consider sending us um, some of your writing or some of your visual art um, to PK. So um, here is a piece from Jeff about why um, he joined this workshop with us. So Jeff writes, I signed up for the PCAP workshop to advance my knowledge in things I have no knowledge about. And I hope to learn more about things that I do know. I also signed up because I love to paint and was hoping that there would be some painting going on. Someday, I would like the truth to come out in my case because I'm doing life without for a crime I didn't do. That way I could go to Italy, Rome. I would love to see the Colosseum and go to some famous art galleries because painting is a part of who I am. And I would really love to see the art galleries in Italy because of all the famous paintings and painters that Italy has had. I would also like to see the Sistine Chapel because of all the beautiful artwork that is in it. I give the world a gift every time I finish a painting, but in these times of destruction, I would really like to give the world the gift of peace. There is so, so much anger in the world today. I think, no, I know that a lot of the hatred in the world today is coming from politicians. Well, the United States anyway. The Republicans and Democrats need to stop fighting and unite. Once a party wins the election, they need to work together to make the United States the place it could and should be. United as one, we should stand. But that is not the way it's been lately. We need peace in the world and where everyone is equal, black, white, brown, it doesn't matter what color you are. Everyone's life matters. 
The Bible doesn't say that one person's color is better than the next. Everyone is equal in God's eyes, and that is how it should be. So thank you um, for that, Jeff. We really loved hearing from you, um, and we can't wait to see the pictures from your trip to Italy. Um, the next person is Richard. And in the two packets we received from Richard, we got a sense of his openness and willingness to share about his personal experiences. Um, he had the dreaming and driving piece, which we shared in the final packet. And that really showed his ability to explore fantasy and create something unusual with his writing. So Richard, we continue, we encourage you to continue exploring your voice and using your personal experiences as a basis for creative expression. Um, and then share them with us at PCAP as well, if you so please. Um, so a little something from David here, or David, <laughs> Richard here, um, which was about the childhood object prompt. My childhood object is a Walkman CD player. It was dark blue with the orange logo and gray on the side. Smelled brand new and also was plastic. My headphones were black with the wraparound earlobes. I would always walk or ride bikes as a child, blaring my headphones super loud. And we felt like, you know, even that short little description, it really set a scene for us and we could imagine Richard as a child walking with his Walkman. Um, so thank you for sharing that with us. All right. Next we have Nestor. Um, I loved reading Nestor's writing and I know the other facilitators did too um, because of his sense of optimism. Um, he has a way of finding the beauty in everything and everyone um, that's really infectious and he conveys that sense of appreciation um, for all of the little things. So that was really um, much needed for I think a lot of us. So we hope you continue um, to find community with us at PCAP and to join more workshops, to stay in touch via the mail um, and all of those things. Here's a piece from Nestor um, that kind of encapsulates what I was talking about. I love and enjoy people in general. And I'm an Aries baby. So with every flower I see, I need to stop and admire their beauty. People are beautiful and everyone has a story. And when I was home, I met people in different walks of life and I respected their ways. Some I just disagreed, but I would never hold it against them. I can relate to the lives in an American marriage, which is completely different. My creative side had died until that song, Josh Groban's You Are Loved, sparked that side that I was so in love with inside that I had to get up and create what I thought I lost in myself. And that's the beauty I see in people. Thank you for sharing that, Nestor. That's really um, inspirational. So next we have Tyrese. Um, Tyrese created really beautiful imagery in his writing and they were often based on memories from his life. Um, his musings on the novel on an American marriage were very smart. They were personal and they showed a great deal of inner reflection and consideration. Um, they were very humbling to read, and thank you for sharing those personal thoughts with us. Um, Tyrese, we hope that you continue to share who you are through your attentive, careful prose, and stay connected to PCAP as well. We would love to see more of your writing. Tyrese said, if I could give a gift to the rest of the world, I would give a flash of the bad and good events and places past, present, and maybe even future of our entire world to each person. Hoping that will help people come to a clear understanding of our world and our existence in it. Broadening a perspective in life because sometimes I feel that we as people are so restricted and isolated that we can't fathom and accept the world in a new or different way. So thank you for sharing that thought with us and, and the same with all the other thoughts you shared in your packet. Okay, um, and ultimately we have Sebastian um, who was very skilled at um, sharing himself with his readers. He was very vulnerable in all of his pieces 
Um, we felt like we really got to know him. He connected with his family a lot in his writing. Um, he shared his story with us and the story of his family um, and how that has influenced him in his life. Um, so we are so grateful and so honored by that vulnerability. Um, thank you. We hope you continue to express yourself um, in your writing as a way to um, not only express yourself, but to like process and get to know yourself um, and to share it with us at PCAP, of course. We would love to hear from you. Um, so I chose this piece um, that Sebastian sent to us um, about love. He titled it, Love Is. Love is life. Love is what makes the world go around. Love can come in many shapes and forms. Love is mysterious, just like my feelings for you. I don't know where they come from. These are feelings I'm not used to. Love is when you make me smile. Love is when we talk and laugh. Love is for you. Love is for me. Your smile is sweet. Your attitude is all. Love is life. Love is what makes the world go around. My love for you is strong and true. My life I want to spend with you. And just so you know, I love you. Perfect for being almost Valentine's Day. <laughs> it is. I love that poem. Thank you, Sebastian. And then we end with Marco. Um, Marco, we received a packet from almost every week, um, which really gave us the opportunity to get to know his honest, well-tended to writing. Um, Marco shared with us that he got COVID during our workshop, and that was the reason that he missed a couple packets. And we just wanted to take this opportunity to send, you know, all of our good thoughts and healing and hoping that you fully recovered and anyone else in the workshop who experienced COVID during this time. Um, Marco's voice is really clear and very much his own. No matter the subject of his writing, his strong voice remained behind every word. And in this voice, he shared with us many underlying meanings and morals, which he seamlessly integrated into his writing. He was always showing instead of just telling. Um, he also said at one point that he believes that how sometimes the best way to help yourself is by helping others. Um, and we really saw him living that in his writing, like through every word, you could just feel kindness behind um, all of his pieces. So Marco, we really hope that you continue to nurture your important voice and share your stories with the world. Your, your authenticity is really beautiful and please stay connected to the PCAP community and submit your writing to the anthology. Um, so Marco, because we had so many packets from him, we have um, here and actually uh, a letter really addressed to all of us that he sent um, that we also received after our final packet. Um, and so this is a message to everyone. And then afterwards, I'm gonna read um, another piece that he wrote. So this is for all of us. To my fellow participants and facilitators, I say thank you. Even though getting mail here has become hectic, I looked forward to these packets. I was always anxious to see what the weekly highlights and prompts were. I learned a lot from this workshop. I found inspiration and motivation from every person's work I had the chance to read. To those who participated here at Brooks, thanks for hanging in there. It was rough staying focused and dealing with COVID-19. I would like to dedicate my writings to all in the Michigan prison system that have been affected by this pandemic, and especially to those who have lost their lives. You didn't deserve to die like that. And on a personal note, Scott, you might be gone, but you are not forgotten. We missed you here at Brooks. Thanks for taking the time to help people here and improve their lives for the better. Lastly, no one knows how much time they have left on this planet. Writing is such a powerful way to leave the type of imprint that you want to be remembered by. Much love to you all. God bless, Marco. And the sentiment is so true. And we can just say that the writing that we have shared in these last you know, 13 weeks or however long it ended up being, you all did really impact us. And we have your writing imprinted with us forever. Um, so thank you so much because this collaboration really means everything in normal times and especially right now just getting to have this this connection despite it all has been really important um and so another little piece from marco from his many um this was him describing his childhood street um so he said 
The west side of Detroit was the place and Kent Field between six and seven mile roads was the street. I called Kent Field home from the mid eighties until the early nineties. The overall vibe and feel of the street changed with the season and the time of year. You were sure to smell the scent of bacon, ham, or sausage in the early morning hours of the day, as well as the scent of fried chicken, pork chops, hamburgers, or some baked goods coming from the several homes in the, uh, sorry, <laughs> in the evening. Like so many parts of the city, the street really came to life in the summertime. Hip hop, R&B, techno, gospel, and house music gave us the songs that formed the soundtrack of the street. That music filled the air day and night at different times, especially on the weekend. The street was very diverse, filled with a lot of interesting people. I remember a man known as Pastor Bill. He freely dedicated his local church and its resources. He made sure the kids in the neighborhood had plenty of summer and after school activities to get involved in. There was also a middle-aged white man named Mr. Snodgrass, who was an army vet. There was constant harassment and confrontation between him and the kids on the block. If there was a taste in my block, it would be soul food. Almost everyone had some, some ties to the South. We did have a Jamaican restaurant at the corner of our block that everybody loved. There was also Bob's Pizza, which served hand-tossed pizza. They served the biggest slices for a dollar to the after-school crowd from 2 to 4 p.m. It was always a treat to go watch them spin the pizza dough in the air. It's been open for about 50 years in the same location. There are so many memories I cherish from that street, but like so many neighborhoods in the city, the flood of crack co cocaine destroyed so much of the area and the people who lived there. I gained some lifelong friendships from that street. My best friend of almost 35 years, along with his sister, were still real tight to this day. We communicate with each other on a regular basis and my niece still speaks with her mom's friend that stayed across the street from us. Even though that street is a shell of what it once was, it will always hold a very special place in my heart. So thank you, Marco, for everything you shared with us. Thank you. Okay. So as we had talked about during, um, through, throughout the presentation about staying in touch with us. Well, this is the address to do so. Um, this address here is the PCAP office. So it's the headquarters of all things PCAP. And this, for example, is the address that you would use if you wanted to submit writing for the PCAP Lit Review Anthology. Um, like Ashley said earlier, this comes out every year. Um, it's on a rolling basis submission. So you can submit any time and they will include it in the batch um, that's being considered for whatever the next anthology is that's coming out. So at any time, please, please feel free to submit your writing to us. Um, we also have the PCAP art show, um, which you can submit visual art. Um, and also we have Linkage Project. The Linkage Project is how we stay in touch with people after they've been released from prison. So if any of you are coming up on the end of your sentences um, and you would like to stay involved with PCAP once you're on the outside, um, this is also the place to get in touch. We have lots of resources for people who are coming home. Um, you can also send a message um, to PCAP for really anything that you think you may need. Once you're part of the PCAT family, it like really is a family. So um, send a note to PCAP to start getting our newsletter so you can stay up on all things PCAP. Um, if you have a court date coming up and you need letters, um, any of our facilitators are more than happy to write those character letters for you. Um, if you are reaching the end of your sentence and you come home and you need resources, um, reach out to PCAP for the linkage stuff. If you just want to connect with other people um, who are in the process of reentry, um, connect with PCAP for that too. So um, finally, we just want to say thank you so much um, for everything you did this semester. It was so tough um, and it was not um, ideal because we couldn't convene together and foster that sense of community by sitting around the same table and reading our pieces out loud to each other. Um, but I think we did an amazing job of sticking to it, sticking with it, and um, still finding ways to collaborate, even though we couldn't physically be together. 
Um, I know that this workshop and the writing that I got to read um, from all of you and from my co-facilitators really um, buoyed me and kind of kept me afloat during these really tough times. Um, I think like really the most important and like delicious part of life mm -hmm. is connection. Um, and I'm just so happy that um, we got a chance to do that together throughout these 13 weeks. Um, and I hope that I see all of you in future PCAP happenings um, and that you stay in touch with PCAP. Completely. And also thank you all so much for your patience um, through all of this, because, you know, as we all know, this was the first time PCAP has ever done a workshop like this before. And we know that it was hard that they, there was, you know, delays of getting the packets. And sometimes you would get the next packet before you'd even replied to the first one. And, you know, we know that there were all those little logistics, but the perseverance that everyone had and the fact that we kept pulling through, we kept sending each other writing and always dedicating to the craft of how much connection we can foster and how much we can share through our writing. Um, so thank you. I agree with everything Ashley said. It was so wonderful to be able to connect with you all during this time in a time that we are all feeling so isolated and um, we wish you all the best and we hope that you all get the chance to see this video and see yourselves honored because you really, really deserve it. And we definitely hope to see you in the PCAP community in the future. Thank you, guys.